Hi, my name is Julie Sebi. I'm the owner and author of the Analytics Corner blog. Welcome to my Power Automate for Beginners series, aka Power Automate 101. In my last video, I kicked off this series explaining how to get oriented in Power Automate menus, and it ended just shy of creating a flow. This post picks up where that one left off. We'll talk about Power Automate triggers and actions to get you building. More specifically, I'll explain the different types of triggers and how to find and use actions to create a flow. So let's get started. I'm going to pop over to a flow that I have open in another tab because I wanted to lead off by noting that in Power Automate, all flows must have at least one trigger and one action. If either of these is missing, the application won't allow you to save. So that's sort of your base starting point. With that, I'm going to go back into the Create menu and we can talk about triggers. So what is a trigger? A trigger is an event that starts a cloud flow. And you should have a trigger in mind in the create screen because it dictates the option that you choose. Microsoft provides three types of triggers that largely correspond to the first three options that you see in start from blank. And those triggers are automated triggers, scheduled triggers, and triggers for manual flows. So let's go ahead and start with automated triggers. You can create a flow with an automated trigger by clicking on this button. What is an automated trigger? This kind of trigger runs the cloud flow based on an event. And some examples of automated triggers include when an email is received from a certain person, if a SharePoint list is updated, or when a new file is saved in OneDrive. Let's go ahead and go with this one right here, when a new item is created in SharePoint. And I'm just going to name this my flow and create. And this is the start of my flow. I have a trigger, but it, if I try to save it, you'll see that it gives me an error. And that's because this is not configured and I also don't have an action. That's what an automated trigger is. The second type of trigger available in Power Automate is a scheduled trigger. And that corresponds to a scheduled cloud flow. And with this type of flow, it's basically run at a certain time or time interval. So again, I'll call this my flow. And we will set this up to begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I want this to repeat, let's just say weekly. And tomorrow is Friday. Woohoo. And this will run once a week on Fridays at 10 a.m and I will click create and you can click on the action itself and you can see that this runs every runs on Friday every week and if I click edit I can get into more detail of this using advanced options so then that brings us to the third type of trigger and I'll go back which is the manual trigger and the manual trigger corresponds to instant cloud flow I'll call this my flow again. And really what we want to click here is manual trigger. And this is the equivalent of basically just clicking a button. It's a manual action that a person has to take in order to kick off the flow. And really this is just a formality, but because Power Automate requires a trigger and an action, you have to have this. And so that explains kind of the three main types of triggers, the requirements for them. Uh, but I just want to be clear that you can always change a trigger regardless of where or how you started the flow. Let's just say manual trigger for my flow. And this is going to, we'll, we'll work on SharePoint. No, let's go to Teams. We'll post a Teams message. So Microsoft Teams. And I don't want to get, I want to post a message. So I'm going to post a message. I'm going to post as a user and I'll just select a channel from a specific team real quick. We'll go with the analytics team. And we're going to go in the general channel. So essentially what I've done is I have created a flow with a manual trigger that when I cl essentially click this button, it will post in this Teams channel. If I decide that I want to change this, that I don't want it to be manual, I want it to be, let's say, scheduled, 
you can just delete the trigger. I'll type in schedule reoccurrence. And now I've essentially changed the type of trigger. So you're not locked into any particular trigger. You can create whatever you want at the start and then just modify it as needed. Now, this might be a little bit of a moot point, but I want to point it out anyway. Uh, in case you're just really new to Power Automate and you're trying to figure out how to add actions, you'll notice that there are two ways to add actions. There is this plus button, which is essentially how you add actions kind of between existing steps, or you can click on the new step to add to the very end of the flow. And I also want to talk just a little bit about how to search for actions. So most new users start by typing in the type of action they want, like send email. However, this is an inefficient way to search in Power Automate. And as you can see, we get several different types of email actions, but really the action we want is actually an Office 365 Outlook action. And I've definitely chosen the wrong action when searching this way, so I don't recommend it. Instead, what you should do is if you know you want an email action or I want an Outlook action, I can type in Outlook and then I will click Office 365 Outlook. This gives me a list of all of the actions that I could possibly use within Outlook. This is also a really good way to just get a general idea for the range of actions that you can take with Outlook or any other application that Power Automate interacts with. And this is the most efficient way to search in Power Automate. So now once I, once I have all of the Office actions, I'll just look for send email. And you'll notice that a lot of times there are very similar actions or different versions of actions. Some I think most of the time I just choose the most recent version. So that explains how to find actions in Power Automate. I'm going to delete this because I want to now talk about testing and saving. So now you've built a flow with a trigger and an action. And there are a couple of different considerations and recommendations that I have for saving and testing. As I've said before, the flow must contain a trigger and an action in order to save and test. Second, you must save in order to test. This is a new flow, and you'll notice that save is an option, but test is grayed out, so I can't actually test until I save. So let me do this. I don't have a message. I'll add a message in there. I can save. It's saving. So now testing is an option. Notice that when I clicked save that first time, it gave me an error message because I didn't have the message configured. As you can see by this red asterisk, that indicates that these are all required fields. So that's uh, one way in which I feel like Power Automate is a little bit different from other applications. Uh, in Excel, in Spotfire, in Alteryx, and all the other applications that I work with, if I'm not done with something, I can still save it. But in Power Automate, you need to be done with something. Now we can test it if we want. My other points to remember about testing and saving are, if you close this browser window without saving, you're going to lose your work. So you need to click that Save button, save early, save often, save at the end of the day so company-forced restarts of your machine don't force you to start over. Furthermore, it's really tempting when you first start working in Power Automate to just build, build, build. But like I said, if you don't have an action fully configured, Power Automate's not gonna let you save. Therefore, I recommend adding one action at a time, saving it and testing it. And then lastly, if uh, as, you, as you work in Power Automate more and more, you'll find that there are many different ways to perform the same task. And so you might find yourself in a position of wanting to try out a different way of performing a particular task, but you're not yet committed to it. And so the best way of doing this is actually to save a copy of the flow via save as. And you can't do that in this screen. You have to actually go back to uh, this screen here and you can do a save as and save a copy and then you can modify your actions in that copy. If you don't do that, you're gonna wind up adding actions, finding out that they don't work, but then you wanna go back to what you originally had, and it just results in this vicious cycle of adding and re-adding actions. So save as is your friend. You can also find the save as option in my flows here 
under save as. Okay, I'm gonna go back into this flow because I want I do want to, uh, or one of my flows, we're gonna go into this one because I do wanna talk about triggering a test. And when it comes to testing a flow, how it's triggered, it will vary depending on the type of trigger. Manual triggers are the easiest. You basically click test and you'll have the option to manually trigger the test. You'll click that. There is a difference, however, when you're using uh, an action to trigger a cloud flow. So the first time that you test out a flow like this one, you'll have to do it manually. So in this case, I would have to actually send a message to my team's channel. But after you've done that, you have the option to reuse triggers. And so I have triggered this flow five times, all those tests were successful, and I can reuse any of these triggers without having to interact with Teams. I find that that saves a lot of time and you don't have to move between applications. That wraps up testing and saving. Now you're prepared to go explore Power Automate triggers and actions. In a later post, I will cover troubleshooting a failed test, and my next video will go over what you need to know for doing more building in Power Automate. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Check out the first video if you haven't seen it already. Thank you.